are you finding it challenging to identify high quality trades or are you experiencing some level of difficulty whenever you are trying to decide which currency pair to trade or which asset class to trade in the financial markets if you answered yes to that question then this video is for you because i'll be breaking down some personal or some insights that i've personally discovered in my trading journey that could actually benefit you in terms of figuring out which trades to actually take so stay tuned because this is what i'm about to break down for you right so what you have right in front of you is aud nzd you obviously know the story about the australian economy that i'm bullish on the australian economy that is if you've watched my previous video where i broke down aud cad australian dollar against the canadian dollar that was in the second week of september and that trade went all the way up as anticipated and we were able to make a good profit from the trade now we are going to break down australian dollar against the new zealand dollar and this one is a very interesting one especially given the current context of the geopolitical escalations which is between israel hamas hezbollah and now iran as well because last night we had uh, iran actually um, send some missiles or launch some missiles towards israel and we are currently waiting for a response from israel right so the current context makes things a bit difficult because in as much as you can focus on fundamentals but the geopolitical risks or the fear and uncertainty that comes with the geopolitical risks will actually do what will actually drive the markets even further or drive the markets in a very different direction to how they would generally behave so i'm not gonna dive deeper into australian dollar because you know the story about australian dollar and that has not really changed much but what i am going to do is look at the new zealand dollar right so if we're looking at the new zealand dollar you can see that we have this article right here so obviously the, my trade was not based on this article but this is just to show you an idea of the importance of understanding central banks divergence but most importantly understanding fundamentals or using fundamentals as the core of your trading strategy of your trading approach because honestly speaking that is the one discovery that i had back in 2022 that changed my trading forever my trading has has been changed since that discovery that i had when back in 2022 right march 2022 to be exact so what we have here on the on the on the left side is the heading reads as follows more on bnz forecasting a 50 basis point interest rate cut next week from the reserve bank of new zealand right and they generally summarize their reasons why they're expecting that right they summarize their reasons uh and then cpi is headed sub two percent soft labor market to subdue non-tradables inflation rate settings need to move quickly towards neutral 50 basis point cut at october meeting warranted in our opinion we think that this inflationary information that we have received will dominate and that this will ultimately encourage the rbnz to accelerate the easing process right so we are not going to continue diving deeper into what into uh, into what is currently happening or what is said in that article you can obviously here's the headline you can search and read and reach through that article but now we are going to look at what the reserve bank of new zealand have actually said and what they are also focusing on right so what we can clearly see is that if you look on the right here this is my cheat sheet i call this my central bank's cheat sheet because this is where i have what i really pay attention to so but what i want us to focus on is that here's what they said in this in this in this particular instant they said when it comes to growth economic growth so if you read here economic growth has been weak with dampening export demand and and they and the reserve bank of new zealand project a 0.5 percent gdp contraction in the second quarter negative 0.2 percent in the third quarter and 0.1 percent in the fourth quarter so what what were they telling us essentially they expecting weaker growth so now i need you to think about this if you are expecting weaker growth 
and unemployment is rising at the very same time and inflation is falling at the very same time, then what does that tell you as a central bank? You need to lower interest rates to try and preserve the, the current labor market tightness or gains that you have remaining because already unemployment rate is going higher. And for you to also prevent the economy falling or slowing even further, because already what they are telling us, if they're expecting two negative quarters of GDP growth, that means that they are already expecting their economy to be in a technical recession. That is what they are telling us. So for them to minimize the impact of that, that is why they need to cut interest rates. And this is why BNZ is making a case of a larger 50 basis point or 0.5% interest rate cut, right? So for me, this is where it stems from, from understanding the Reserve Bank of New Zealand and what they are expecting or forecasting based on their economy, right? And they also said that they expect headline CPI to reach the target in the third quarter of 2024. Oh, obviously, we are in the fourth quarter right now, but we are, go we are, we are, we are yet to receive third quarter CPI for New Zealand. Because remember, New Zealand CPI or inflation is released every quarter, not like other economies where we get it every single month. So we are still waiting for the third quarter inflation for New Zealand. But it is expected to drop within their target or, or to, to, to drop into their target band in 2024 at 2.3%. And then to the midpoint at the first half of Two point six. Uh, sorry, in, in the first half of 2026, right? That is what they are currently expecting, but it will remain between two to three percent over the next 18 months. So currently, from 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 that meeting that they had to 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 moving forward, that is what they were saying, right? So you can clearly see that we now have a perfect picture because if you look at C core CPI, core CPI is at 2.8 percent, which is below the upper band, which is three percent. It is below that because remember the target is two to three percent, so the midpoint is two point five. Currently, core inflation is at two point eight, so core inflation is within the target, the target range. But headline inflation is currently at three point three, and that is expected to fall to what to below three percent in twenty twenty four, because because that is what they said. They expect headline CPI to reach the target in third quarter twenty twenty four, right? So those are currently the expectations coupled with weaker 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 economic growth as well as an increase in the unemployment rate or weakening labor market right so all of those things actually align for what for another interest rate cut in october and then we have bnz making a case of a larger rate cut so now based on this understanding that is why i decided to actually do what to actually buy aud New Zealand because I'm bullish on the Australian dollar and now I am even more bearish on the New Zealand dollar or the New Zealand economy. But then we now find ourselves in a situation where we have an escalation in the geopolitical tensions, like I said. So when I executed this trade, I had all of this in the back of my mind because I did share this in the last video. I'm going to pin this video up on top on the right top corner uh, in that video. I spoke about the geopolitical tensions and how the escalations could negatively impact what negatively impact our trades or negatively impact the financial markets. Right. So when I executed this position, I obviously had that in the back of my mind. How 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 did I manage to have that in the back of my mind or to position myself in a way that if we do see escalations, then this trade still has the potential to also work because Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar are both commodity currencies. And whenever there is an, a, a geopolitical event that is going to negatively impact financial markets, commodity currencies underperform or they do not do well. So Australian, Australia, Australian dollar will weaken, New Zealand dollar will weaken. But in this regard, New Zealand dollar is going to weaken more than Australian dollar because New Zealand dollar is already weak. So that is why... I, when I positioned myself to looking to sell the New Zealand dollar, I was like, okay, I'm going to sell the New Zealand dollar against the Australian dollar because I'm already bullish on the Australian dollar. And even if we were to have an escalation, because at that point it was not certain that Iran was actually going to retaliate and strike Israel. But since they've done that, I, I had positioned myself already for that because this was before the Iran, this huge four-hour candle here, it was before Iran actually... Um, sent some missiles to act to 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 israel actually delivered 
on what they had said they were going to do, which is retaliate. But you can clearly see that instead of price falling because Australian dollar is a commodity currency, what happened? Price essentially moved sideways and then now it's picking up again. Why? Because New Zealand dollar is fundamentally bearish or fundamentally dovish compared to the Australian dollar. And now if geopolitics take over again, fundamentals to a certain extent will take a backseat. But in this particular scenario, the New Zealand dollar will, weak, will weaken even further than what? Than the Australian dollar, right? So it is with understanding central bank divergence and understanding fundamentals, those are one of the biggest discoveries that I've, that I've personally had in my trading journey that, like I said, changed my trading forever because I am able to position myself ahead of time and I no longer suffer with the difficulty or the challenge of picking trades or picking of picking which which or, or, or essentially i no longer struggle with trade selection selecting high quality trades and when i say selecting high quality trade it does not mean that it is only winning trades some trades do not work out but majority of the trades do work out why because i have a system of selecting high quality trades time and time and time and time and time again because i understand central bank divergence and i understand fundamentals and since i'm aware of what is happening fundamentally i'm able to position myself ahead of time we also have oil that oil is currently rising because of the whole geopolitical tensions we're able to position ourselves ahead of time because of that you are also aware if you've watched my previous videos you are also aware of the silver trip buy trade that i have and i did say when i when i was going over that trade as well that it is it was also i also took the trade positioning for what for a put a potential escalation in the middle east tensions right and this is what we're having so far and this is how essentially i've positioned myself also with aud nzd right so if you're struggling to actually choose or pick high quality trades then i wouldn't advise but i would recommend that you look into fundamental analysis but to be more specific central bank divergence have a clear crystal clear understanding of central banks and what they are looking at and what they are doing and then see how the data is also behaving and once you get clear on that then you, you that will be the end of your struggles when it comes to trade selection if you get clear on central bank divergence or understanding central banks that would be the end or the last time you ever experience any difficulty when it comes to picking trades or choosing trades to actually take right so i hope you found value from this video and if you did like the video and obviously if you have not yet subscribed do subscribe and share it with those who you feel might benefit from this knowledge because i know that a lot of retail traders struggle how do i know because i was once i was once them if that's not you i was once them or one of those retail traders who are struggling in the financial markets having difficulty in picking trades always picking the low quality trades trading frequently instead of focusing on quality over quantity i was once i was at, at some point I was, I was, I was those re retail traders, right? So if you do know any of them, do share this video with them so that they might also benefit from this information. And once again, always trade based on future expectations. Do not trade only based on what is happening right now. Always have an open mind and keep your eyes open. Don't trade as if you're wearing blinkers, the, the, those those patches that they put on horses so that their horse can only focus on one direction. Don't wear blinkers when you're trading the financial markets. Open your eyes and scan around to see what is happening and what could potentially impact the markets tomorrow. And then whenever you're selecting trades or selecting high quality trades, you are always positioning yourself in the best possible way, right? Minimizing your risk and maximizing your potential reward. So, I'm gonna see you guys in the next video and like i said if you found value from this one hit that like hit that like button and obviously do turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when i do drop another video cheers